were made for adventure and you need a guide to help you get there. Hey everyone, I'm Hannah and I'm a part of a creative team here at Crossroads. We believe to our core that you were made for an adventurous life, a life of meaning and purpose, and we wanna help to encourage you and guide you on your way. Today, we're talking about having a guide. Any successful adventure needs one, and we don't talk about them nearly as much as we should, especially when it comes to bigger life questions like, who am I and why am I even here? If we're willing to have a guide for a hike, then having a guide for life feels like a no-brainer. Let's jump in. There is a reason you aren't satisfied with the ordinary. You were made for adventure. A life with God doesn't have to be boring. It can be a pulse pumping, heart pounding life of purpose. And we can guide you there. The adventure awaiting you is bigger than you could ever imagine. Join us every weekend for 30 minutes of challenge, hope, and encouragement to guide you on your spiritual adventure. There's something that those who live adventurous lives take advantage of that very few people do. I'm Brian Tome, senior pastor at Crossroads. The thing that they take advantage of is getting guidance. They go to a place where they get outfitted with the right gear and the right things. This one day was just a normal pickup truck and it's been turned into an overland vehicle. My main source of adventure for a long, long time used to be riding motorcycles. I still do that, I enjoy that very much. But the problem was I wasn't able to do it very well with my wife. So a friend of mine gave me some guidance. His name is Judd. He said, hey, this overlanding thing is really great. It's overlanding, what's overlanding? Well, you go with your wife, you go over places, you go to rough roads, you camp together, yada, 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 yada. And so I started transforming this vehicle into an overland vehicle. I got guidance from Judd. I also got guidance from an online community called Overland Portal. I learned things like, uh, like these are traction boards right here. These suckers, you take and you put underneath mud or underneath snow or whatever it is to give, give yourself, I learned about that. I learned about having the right cases, the store gear. I have a canopy of tent that goes on here. I've got uh, in the back here, I've got a little, a little compressor. So when I air down my tires when I'm off road, so it's softer when I get back on pavement, I can air it up again. I learned to innovate because I learned from other people who guided me. Like this is a cutting board. Yeah, this is where the kitchen is. I can hang out here and I can chop all my stuff here. I like overlanding. It's a really, really good adventure, but you know, the biggest adventures are not around overlanding. The biggest adventures are around who you're dating. The biggest adventures are around, are you overcoming that substance addiction? The biggest adventures are, are you getting out of credit card debt? The biggest adventures are discovering who has God made me to be? What's the, what's the right job for me? What's the right career for me? The greatest adventures are the things that are relational, that are spiritual, that are emotional, that are life orienting on a day by day basis. And those adventures, we need guidance on. We can't figure it out on our own. Anybody who's hardcore into adventure understands that for you to get someplace you haven't been, you need an outfitter. You need a guide, not to figure it out on your own. Hey, how about we go on an adventure together? And while we go, I'll tell you a story from the book of Acts chapter eight. Here's what it says. There was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official at Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning seated in his chariot and he was reading the prophet Isaiah and the spirit said to Philip, go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, do you understand what you are reading? And he said, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Here we have an Ethiopian who's of African descent, Philip who's a Jew who's not of African descent. What do you know? We have people from different races interacting positively with one another. Can we have more of that in our world, please? Mm, 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 yes, we need more of that. This Ethiopian is a eunuch. That means he's been castrated. In the ancient world, if you were inside of a king's court or somebody of high authority, 
they would often say, if you're going to serve in my court, you need to be castrated because that would ensure they wouldn't be a threat because they wouldn't lead a coup because they could never have their own lineage to then be a threat to the king. So this is a very, very high up important guy, this Ethiopian eunuch is. And he's been in this Jewish region, he's heard their scriptures, he's heard this guy named Jesus, and he's, he's just curious. And so he's by the side of the road, he's reading some of their ancient texts, and Philip has this adventuresome thing happen where, where God talks to him. He goes, says, goes over to the guy and says, hey, um, do, you, do you know what you're reading here? And the guy says, how can I know unless somebody guides me? See, this guy, understands what an adventure is about, and he's on a spiritual adventure. He knows that to get to a place where he hasn't been to before, he needs someone who's been there. He needs someone who has pieces that he doesn't have. He needs somebody who can offer clarity and perspective. That's what you need, that's what I need. Philip ends up guiding him. He outfits him with the knowledge that he needs. This guy gets baptized. He comes to understand who Jesus is. His eternal trajectory is forever changed. And it's all because he was willing to ask for a guide. He was humble enough as a person of power and influence to say, I need someone to take me to a place I haven't been and to give me some pieces of information. Is I take you on this adventure we're gonna go on, I wanna to try to give you some piece of information so you can get a guide for your life, for your spiritual adventure, your future depends on it. To go on an adventure, you're gonna to have to need a guide. Now, I know what a lot of you are thinking, I don't need a guide. I'm a self-starter, self-educator. I can figure it out. Uh, no, no, not really. Not really, you, you, you can't. You see, an adventure is all about going someplace you don't know, doing something you haven't done. As soon as you've gone there, as soon as you've done it, it might be adventurous, but it's not the pure adventure that means I don't know exactly what's happening here. I feel uncomfortable. We feel uncomfortable because we haven't been there before. We haven't done it before. It's the place where God wants to take us. At critical points in my life, I've had guides, multiple guides. Uh, if I have any speaking skills right now, it's because of a guy by the name of Denny who was a guide for me. He heard me speak to groups in college and would give me brutal feedback every time. He guided me. I had another guy by the name of Dan who gave me a respect and love actually for the local church. Helped me see that church work could and should be actually adventurous. I had a guy who guided me named Tom. When I got married, started having kids, Tom was ahead of me. He had been married several years longer than I was, had more kids than I did. And I, I looked to him for different pieces of information. All those people had problems in their life. The problem is we look for a guide. We think we're looking for the second incarnation of Jesus who doesn't have any problems. Not true. You just need to find somebody who's got a couple pieces for you in the area of the adventure that God is pushing you in. Right now, you know, we're going on an adventure. You, you don't know where we're going. I do. We could have dropped you in these woods. You could have wandered around for a little bit and had a good old time. But for you to get to the place where I want to take you, you need me. You need a guide. For you to get to the place that God wants to take you, you need a guide. You need people. You need a person to give you key pieces of information and inspiration that can get you where you want to go. Not only that, will get you where God wants you to go. Man, Brian is saying some really good stuff. If we want to get to the next adventure that God is trying to take us on, we're going to need a guide to help us get there. Well, one of the ways that I've taken an adventure with my relationship with God is by trusting him with my money. And if you would like to do that right now, you can go to crossroads.net slash give or text crossroads to 313131. Our church is making a difference all over the world and in our local communities. And to learn more about how you can get connected to your local community, stay tuned to the end of service. Well, the common questions I get, well, where do I find me one of these guides? Well, if it's a physical adventure, it's pretty obvious. Like if you want to hike the Appalachian Trail, you can go to, go to the Yellow Pages and find a guide. 
Yellow Pages. Yeah, yeah, let me guide you with the Yellow Pages. Long, long time ago, there were these big, thick books full of yellow pages, and you would look alphabetical order up with the kind of thing that you needed. So you probably couldn't even do that anymore because there was no yellow pages. But OK, if you want a guide to help you in your marriage, you go to Google and you Google marriage counselors in your area. What if you want a guide who's going to outfit you for your spiritual adventure, for your spiritual advancement. You know who that guide is? That guide is the local church. I know. Oh, it is so common. Like, oh, the church, I don't know. Everyone likes to complain about the other church. The church has problems. Every church has problems. You're never going to find the perfect church. In fact, if you want the perfect church, please don't come to Crossroads because you're going to screw it up really, really even worse than it already is. Because <laughs> you're going to bring your imperfections with us. No church, no God is perfect, but the truth is, it is the people of God that are the guides that push us. Philip has a guide of the Holy Spirit that tells him, go to the Ethiopian eunuch. He gets outfitted, that's what a church is. We outfit you, we outfit you with the articles you need, with the teaching you need, with the opportunities for mission trip you need, with the perspective that you may need, connecting to people that you need. Not only you connect with people who guide you, but you wanting to guide others. God does not just want us to sit back and wait for someone to stick the spiritual IV in our veins and go, oh, oh, just give me spiritual feelings. He wants us to be pushed and to push others. You've got to know people that you're trying to help. You don't have to be perfect, just need to be one step ahead of them in certain areas to help them and to guide them. This is the adventure that God has been doing for thousands of years, people guided by the Holy Spirit, going places they wouldn't normally do, equipped to be people they couldn't have been on their own power, and helping people get to their adventure, to be guided, to be outfitted. That's the adventurous life. That's what you've got to want, or else you're just normal. And who wants normal? It says that Philip runs when he hears the Holy Spirit, runs to the adventure. In fact, the eunuch as well, he's in a running posture. He's like, I want to know. I want to learn. What do I got to do? Someone's got to tell me what's going on here. You've got to want it. You've got to get a little pep in your step. You've got to want more than you have right now. You've got to want to be used in the purposes of God, going a place where you haven't been before. It's your adventure. You've got to step up. You've got to step out into the unknown. That, that was more intense than I remember. I haven't done that for a while. And I don't think I'm ever gonna do that again for the rest of my life. Uh, I've, I've aged since the last time I did that, which is years and years and years ago. I think over time, I, my spine is compressed, my discs have thinned out, and there's just a little more kish, cushion between my vertebrae. And when I hit that water, I, hmm, I felt it. You know how I, knew about that place. Somebody guided me. Somebody told me where it was. One of my favorite family memories is taking my kids to jump off that. I remember my daughter, who was 13, showed her where that was, took the top, encouraged her. She jumped off. It is so high that she jumped off and her, and her, her bathing suit came off and got stuck in her braces. <laughs> People, people always go, well, you were a sicko parent. Um, no, I just like challenging my kids. I just like pushing my kids. I like encouraging my kids to see the life's adventure. You shouldn't be sitting back and being passive and fearful. You should be pushing. You should be moving. That's what I'm trying to do with you. Do not, do not just sit back and go, oh, oh, what an interesting service at Crossroads today. Oh, so, oh, interesting spiritual insight I hadn't thought about. Oh, it's not important until it gets you moving, until you step out, until you step off the ledge. That is what matters. That is your adventure. That's when it becomes an adventure instead of just a philosophy. I hope right now you know exactly what your next adventure is. Is it your marriage? 
Is it graduating? Is it getting out of the addictive behavior that you're in? Is it, what, what is it? Whatever your adventure is, you've got to find somebody who can guide you. You got to find somebody who's a step beyond you. You got to find somebody who's been where you are right now and has gotten to another place. You got to listen to them. You got to move. You've got to do it. It's not working for you unless you're moving and you need a guide to help you move. I want to pray for you right now. I want to pray with my eyes open. I want to look right at you because I think this is a significant moment that God has for you right now. God, I thank you for every person who's been with us today. Every person who's looked at the screen, every person has their head bowed. God, we want what you want for our life. Some of us are going to give our life to you right now. We just want to say, Jesus, come into my life. I want to give my heart to you. I want your spirit in me. I want your forgiveness. I want to move on. Some of us are saying, God, I need something new. I need to do something new in my life. I need to, I need to get to a new place with my relationships, with alcohol. God, we give you these things and I want it now. Would you please send me a guide, help me see a guide, have the boldness to ask a guide to help me. I'm looking forward to your adventure, God. In your name, the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, we're going to do a little connect with God through music right now, through worshiping. And in a little bit, we're going to tell you how you actually can find a guide at Crossroads. How, how could somebody at Crossroads actually help you in your spiritual adventure? We're going to give you that information in just a moment. Let's worship God right now, though.
to experience the sort of meaningful, adventurous life that God made for you. That's why we have this channel, to equip you and encourage you on your journey. Make sure to subscribe right here so that you don't miss any of it. In fact, if you want a starting point for that sort of adventurous life, you can click right here. We've got a short playlist of videos to help you unpack the idea. Finally, if you want to partner with us financially, you can help bring this message to others. Text Crossroads to 313131. We'll see you soon.